Are we good? Ready to go, Johnny? Good morning and welcome to Willow Meadows. We are so happy and grateful that you are worshiping with us today. Today is a fifth Sunday. Now back in the good old days when we could do things like leave our house, fifth Sundays meant we would uh, come for an early abbreviated worship service and then we would go out in our community to minister and serve. Obviously we can't do that today, but we still consider this a ministry day. I'm starting the first of three Sundays talking about how to live when you've had enough. And today we're going to talk about how ministering to others is one way you can do that. We'll also share with you some specific ways you can minister, not just when we get back together, but even now when things are still so crazy. We look forward to worshiping with you today. We have a special milestone to mark today, and Elias will come now and do that. Alex Ritchie turned 18 on January the 28th. Happy birthday. Uh, he is the son of Mary and Brett uh, Ritchie. Alex is also on our team that helps us with live streaming. So we are very, very grateful for Alex and all that you do for our church and the love that you have for our church. So today we celebrate an important milestone, 18th birthday milestone, 18. We celebrate this milestone because we know how challenging transitions can be. You know this, this year is full of transitions. You will graduate from high school and you will begin college, even though you have been doing lots of college courses already. And you will almost begin, what, a sophomore, maybe a sophomore year when you start college? That's pretty incredible, especially when it comes to paying for tuition. I know that you make your mom and dad very, very happy with that. You know, you'll be transitioning to this important phase in your life, and it's a beautiful transition, but it can be scary. We, your church, want to encourage you and remind you that God will be with you in all of your transitions. Listen to these words from Deuteronomy. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. What a beautiful promise that is. And that's the promise that God makes you in every transition. Turning 18 is exciting, but there's so many great opportunities. And one of those is being able to register to vote. I don't know if you got this in the mail yet, but if you didn't, I have one for you. I hope that you will fill this out um, and then put it in the mail. You don't even have to put a stamp. It's not necessary if you mail it in the United States. So all you have to do is fill it out, put it in the mailbox, and just remember that your voice matters. That you are important to God and God's world. You get to do something beautiful for God's world. I also have a very special quote that's been very important in my life and that I want to share with you and I share with every 18th milestone is from Mother Teresa. She says, 
I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. I hope that you will create many, many ripples for God's world, that your handprints will be all over his kingdom, and that you are making a difference for him, that you find your purpose, and you live out that purpose for the kingdom of God. So this is to remind you that you are important to God and that you're called to make ripples. And so I also have a stone. And I hope the stone will remind you that you get to play a part in God's world, that you can make a difference in God's world. He has equipped you with everything that you need to do amazing things with your life. What a great joy and what a great promise that is. We're so grateful for you, Alex. We're grateful for your family. We're grateful for all that God is doing in your life. And we look forward to all those ripples that you will make today and the days ahead. You have a beautiful foundation, a mom and dad who love you so much, a church who has been supporting you and caring for you and helping you know the love of God. And so now in this transition, may you go forward, be his hands and feet, and make your mark in his world. He will be with you. He will not forsake you. He will always, always love you. And what a promise that is, not just for him, but for each one of us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we are so blessed to have Alex as part of our family. What he does for us on Sunday mornings to make it possible for many to be part of our worship service but not just for those gifts that he shares with us, but because of his faith and his love for you. So we pray blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon his life, that you would go with him, that fear would not dictate his life, but the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ, the promise that you give us that you will never leave us or forsake us. May those words guide him for the rest of his life. And may his mark be made on this world that needs more and more people like him to use their gifts and their passions to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth, to join you in the work that you are doing in your world that you deeply love. So bless him. Thank you for mom and dad and grandparents who have invested in his life for helping him to be the very best Alex that he can be. So we ask for protection. We ask for wisdom. We ask for you to lead and guide his ways. Thank you for your love for him. Thank you for the purpose you have given in him. Thank you for all that you would do with his life. We are just honored and blessed to celebrate this beautiful milestone with him and his family. We pray in Christ. Amen. Happy birthday. Good morning. It's good to be back. Uh, I'm excited to be here to worship with you. It's been a long time. Uh, but I just want to say thank you to the congregation, uh, to everybody watching who prayed for us uh, and prayed for our family. Uh, Riker is doing very well. Um, hello, baby boy. Mommy loves you, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> um, like I said, it's great to be back, and I want to say thank you also to the staff um, for everything they did while we were gone. They did such a great job. Um, and we're just going to continue to to love God and worship God together. So let's let's do so. In the email you received for your worship lyrics, uh, you'll find our responsive call to worship. If you don't have it in front of you, just listen to the words and reflect. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The work of the Lord is enough. The Lord provides nourishment and redemption. The power of the Lord is enough. Let us praise the Lord, whose love endures forever. Would you join us in singing, How Can I Keep From Singing?
the peace among those in your homes, send a text message, send an email, make a phone call. May the peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. Let us continue worshiping together by singing Glory Medley.
Isaiah 45, 22 reads, Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Let's pray to this God. Lord God, we kneel before you and worship you. For you do mighty deeds in heaven and on earth and allow men and women to become your children and your servants. You have done great things for many people, enabling them to serve you and do your will here on earth. For you have promised that the path of humanity will be made straight. You have promised that all we do may be a service to you through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, whom we follow. He will be revealed to the whole world so that the nations will be called to serve you and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Praise be your name, Lord our God. We open our hearts to you. In death and in life, we are yours. Amen. Unfortunately, I spent a lot of time on social media and watching the news while I was at home over my leave. Uh, sometimes it was good news, uh, but most of the time it was not great news. And this song was something that was on my heart every time. Uh, so I invite you to sing with us. Uh, if not singing, then pray with us. Spirit of God, breathe on your church. Pour out your presence and speak through your word. We pray in every nation, Christ be known. Our hope and salvation, Christ alone.
Good morning. Our scripture passage today is the story of the rich young ruler. Now, this young man came to Jesus asking what he could do to enter the kingdom of God. So we are going to use this jar to illustrate what was going on inside of his heart. The first thing that we know about this man is that it was very important to him to obey God's commandments. So we'll use these little scrolls to stand for God's law. The other thing we know about this man is that his wealth was very important to him. Now, in Bible times, if a person was rich, they probably owned flocks of uh, cattle, so we're going to put some animals in here. And he probably had a lot of nice things in his house, so we'll add some jewels. Okay, and he also had lots of money, right? He could buy anything he wanted, so we definitely need to add money. Okay, so let's take a look. Would you say that this jar is full well, it's got a lot of things crammed into it, right? But there's still quite a few empty spaces. It's, it's not completely full. So in the same way, this man realized that there was something missing in his life. He had empty holes in his heart. And so that's why he went and talked to Jesus. And Jesus pointed out to him that trying really hard to obey all of the rules is not ever good enough to be in a perfect relationship with God because no one can do that completely. And Jesus also helped him to understand that his wealth, his love for his wealth, was getting in the way of his love for God. And it was preventing him from sharing the things that he had with other people. So what is the alternative to this kind of life? Well, I'm glad you asked, because in another passage in the Bible, Jesus refers to himself as living water. So we're going to use this second jar to show that when we choose to follow Jesus, that he will completely fill up our hearts. even full to overflowing. There aren't any empty nooks or crannies in that jar, are there? And in the same way, with Jesus in our hearts, we have a full and satisfied and joyful heart. So while Pastor Craig is preaching, I'd like for each of you to find a piece of paper and a crayon and draw a picture of your own heart and inside add or draw a picture or write something that you can do this week to show love to other people. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll get that later. <laughs> uh, Riker, if you're watching, I'd just like to say that I love you too. 
During the last two Sundays, we cast a vision for 2021 that was centered on the word enough. It captures our feelings. It feels good to say out loud. And it reminds us that God is enough. I am enough. And there is enough. Enough to make 2021 a year of blessing, a year that blesses me and blesses you and blesses others and blesses our world and blesses the kingdom of God. It's nice to know something good can come out of all we've gone through, but we still have that deep feeling of having had enough. Enough of COVID tests and vaccine shortages and being stuck at home and eating lukewarm takeout food and seeing loved ones through windows and living our lives on Zoom. I don't think that feeling of enough is going anywhere anytime soon, which means we have to figure out a way to live spiritually productive lives while we carry this feeling around. And that's going to be a challenge. It's hard to be at your best when you are sick and tired of everything that's going on. So for the next few weeks, we are going to look at how we live lives as followers of Jesus when we've had enough. If you have a Bible nearby, please turn to Matthew chapter 19. There we will find this familiar story about someone who was trying to figure out this very thing. He wanted to see if there was more to life, though it seemed that so far he had had a pretty full life. Even though his life was good, he was looking to see what he might be missing. Before we jump into the story, let's talk just a second about that feeling of enough, because in this story, we're going to see a different kind of enough than what most of us are experiencing right now. The enough that we feel is born out of frustration. We don't like things as they are right now. We are tired of it. We want no more COVID living. And we have some strong emotion connected to our feeling of enough. But you can also feel like you've had enough without lots of emotion. You're simply tired of what you're doing, even if what you're doing is good or successful. Maybe there's nothing different or challenging going on. You know, you can feel like you've had enough when you're bored, when there's nothing new, when there's no change. It it doesn't have to mean that things are going poorly or that circumstances are bad. Even a good rut is still a rut. Sometimes we've just had enough of the same old, same old and need something else. That's more of what we see happening in the story of the rich young ruler in Matthew 19. Let's take a look at his encounter with Jesus, starting in verse 16. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones, he inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said, what do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away because he had great wealth. I think what the rich young ruler had had enough of was religious knowledge. This guy knew the Jewish law frontwards and backwards. The rich young ruler is those of us who grew up in Sunday school. We were there every Sunday. We had every box checked on our envelope. We had a Bible and a Baptist hymnal at home. We were at Bible school every summer. We could tell all the familiar Bible stories from memory. It is not a bad life at all. But I think the rich young ruler had gone as far as his knowledge would take him. And he had had enough. He sought out Jesus to see if there was something more that he could learn or do. I mean, after all, Jesus was the great teacher, and Jesus did some amazing things. You know, he healed all these people. He fed 5,000 with a little bit of fish and bread. 
The rich young ruler had all the rules and all the teachings and all the, the, the laws. And, and he had likely been told his whole life that that was all he needed. But in Jesus, he saw something more. And isn't that the best thing about following Jesus? There's always so much more. I don't think the rich young ruler resented the teachings and the law the way we resent COVID living. I just think it had simply done all it could do for him. I think he knew he had all the religious smarts he would ever need, and he wondered what he was lacking. He was wondering if there was something more. Now, when Jesus responded to him in verse 18, giving that uh, quick summary of the law, I think what Jesus was doing was trying to gauge where the rich young ruler was in his desire. I mean, I think he threw that out there to see if that was enough for him, if that would satisfy him. Or would he say he needed, that he wanted something more? Jesus wanted to find out if the rich young ruler was ready to take the next step in following him. Sometimes that feeling of I've had enough is a great motivation to grow and change and make some progress. I've heard this story taught many, many times, and I think just about every time I've heard it taught, the rich young ruler's response to Jesus has been presented as a very confident, if not arrogant, response. Jesus gives him that summary of the law, and he says, is that all there is? Why, well, I've been doing all those things. I've been doing all those things since I can remember. I guess I've got this down. <laughs> but I wonder if maybe his tone was a little different than that. Maybe his tone was in this spirit of enough. Jesus re responds to him with this summary of the law, and he says, I know all that. I've been doing all that. What I want to know is there something else? Is there something more? And Jesus said to him, yes, there is. Go and sell all you have, give it to those with great need, and then come follow me. I think Jesus agreed the rich young ruler knew all he needed to know. Now it was time to do something. You know what? I think most of us probably know all we need to know. We just need to do something that puts that knowledge into practice. When confronted, the rich young ruler could not do it. He couldn't deny what was apparently the focal point of his life, which was accumulating wealth. He couldn't put that aside so that he could follow Jesus with abandon. He chose what he had over what he wanted. He chose the despondency of the same old thing rather than the so much more Jesus offered him. I don't think Jesus was saying to the rich young ruler and to all of us that a vow of poverty is required to follow Jesus. I think Jesus was saying the way you live when you've had enough, the way you get out of that rut of frustration or anger or boredom is that you change your focus. You get your eyes off yourself. You look somewhere else at someone else. If you want to live for Jesus when you've had enough, you must pay attention to something besides yourself and your enoughness. You get rid of what distracts you, like the accumulation of wealth or social media or whatever distracts you. You put it aside and you start to look around. You notice others. You notice what's going on around you. And then you take the next step and serve others and bless others. You find a greater purpose, and then you make some changes so you can pursue that purpose. What Jesus was saying is that the way you live when you've had enough is you minister to others. He told the rich young ruler that he had the resources to meet some very significant needs. He told him, if you've had enough, of the life you have right now, well, stop accumulating all that wealth and start distributing some of that wealth to meet the needs that are around you. Start ministering to those you can. That's how you follow me. And the same is true for us. If you've had enough because you are frustrated or stuck, see the needs that are around you and meet the needs that you can. That's an offer Jesus will always extend to you. 
And you position yourself to say yes when Jesus makes you that offer by getting rid of what distracts you. Without those distractions, you have more time to pay attention to what's going on around you. You have more time to notice those needs around you. And if you go one step more and do something to meet the needs you see, that's when you really get your eyes off yourself and all you've had enough of. Like Jesus, we need to put into practice the knowledge that we have. You don't gain all that spiritual knowledge just so you can be the smartest person in Sunday school or so you can win at Bible trivia. You be who you claim to be. You actually love God and love your neighbor. When you've had enough, look around, see the faces, see the needs, pay attention and do something. Meet needs in the name of Jesus. Today is the fifth Sunday, which are the Sundays we set aside to do just what Jesus was calling for in Matthew 19. You know, even church life can become one of those positive ruts we can settle into that can cause us to stop looking around and stop seeking the so much more. Fifth Sundays are the days that we worship and work. They are the days that we put our knowledge into practice. But what does ministry look like right now in a COVID-swept world? Sure, maybe by the end of the year we can go out again and do the things we're used to doing on Fifth Sundays. But what do we do right now? I said earlier, ministering to others is one way we need to live when we've had enough. But how do you do that when you're stuck at home? I'm going to invite Elias to come up now and share some possibilities for ministry this year, both for when things come back to normal and right now when we're all a bit homebound. Thank you, Craig. Willow Meadows Baptist Church loves serving others. It's been a major part of who we are and a major part of my responsibilities as your discipleship pastor. And like you, I miss it. I miss Wednesday night serving the children of Ashford Santa Fe apartments and eating around the table with you. I miss serving breakfast to the teachers at Shurn Elementary. I miss the families that we serve in the Rio Grande Valley and crossing the border to serve those asylum seekers. I miss the kids at Fundacion Salvacion Orphanage in Guatemala. I miss our church going out into our community, sharing God's love through hands-on ministry. Next week, our young people are were supposed to be uh, responsible for Super Bowl of Caring, but that's not going to happen. I miss, I miss seeing our young people serving our community. I'm excited about our new partnership with Coalition of Combating Human Trafficking of Texas. Uh, We had a tour planned with them where we would learn more how to help victims of human trafficking. But like everything else, that was canceled. Uh, The past year of COVID-19 has taken so much from us, and one of the most important identities of Willow Meadows Baptist Church is ministry and missions. And we haven't had the opportunity to go out and serve the way we normally would. So what do we do? One of my favorite paintings is Van Gogh's Starry Night. You might not be able to see it from home, and that's okay. You can Google it and look at it. And the sky above you takes our eyes, and those beautiful strokes catches our attention. But if you look lower, if you look down at the the town right there, you would notice some houses, and right in the center of those houses, you would notice a church. You would notice that the houses are lit up. They have the light on, but the church is in darkness. The lights are not on in the church. And that's what COVID-19 has done for us. It has turned off the lights in the church. We're not gathering together in person We're not sending you out this morning to go be the hands and feet of Christ to our community. So what do we do? 
Well, I think what we do is focus upon having the light of Christ in our homes and in our neighborhoods. That we find ways to share the good news with one another, to focus upon our children and one another and our neighbor. What a great re opportunity this is, that the light of Christ shines in our houses as we tell our faith stories to one another, as we pray together, as we turn off the TV and sit around the table and share a meal and break bread with one another. There are still so many children who do not know your faith story and why you are a follower of Christ. And what a great opportunity now to share that story, that that becomes the identity of your family, that your faith and love for Christ is who you are as a family. That the light of Christ will be lit in your home and that then shared into your neighbors. Finding ways to meet needs of your neighbors, praying for them, encouraging them, being there for them. That we move our ministry and missions from now to be focused to our neighbors right across the street and right beside our homes. What a great gift that is. What would happen if your neighborhood was lit up with the light of Christ? What would happen if those around you knew how much you love Jesus and you shared that love with them? That you looked for opportunities to be able to share that love. In a couple of weeks, we're gonna have the Freedom Quilts tour here at the church. And it's gonna be a socially distanced uh, event and ministry opportunity where you'll come in here and look at some beautiful quilts. And that's not going to be our main focus, even though you will see some beautiful quilts. But what the main focus is, is that God loves everyone. And that we want to tell that story through these quilts. That the kingdom of heaven is for all. Those who think differently than you, those who look differently than you, those who believe differently than you, that God's love is for all people. And so that will stir our hearts. And wouldn't it be nice for families to come and then sharing that with our neighbors, to come and hear that story of God's beautiful grace and love, God's story of redemption, God's story of hope, of encouragement, of peace and joy. Are you in a rut? Have you had enough? at being at home? If you're anything like me, yes. But now I'm changing what my home looks like. And I'm changing what my home means to me. That my vision and goal is that the light of Christ will fill my home and so move on to my neighbors finding ways that I can serve them with God's great love. This is my new vision for me in my home. And maybe it's a great vision for us at Willow Meadows Baptist Church. We love serving. So let's serve. Let's share the stories of Christ. Let's light up our homes. Then when we meet back together, that it is the light of Christ that comes from your home that lights up our church, rather than the church being lit up and we try to light your homes. Let's reverse that. And when we gather back together and celebrate all that God has done for us, that we will celebrate the light of Christ in you and in your neighborhood and with your family. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. As Craig challenged us, when you've had enough, look around. See the faces. See the needs. Pay attention and do something. When you've had enough, minister to others. Meet some needs in the name of of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this fifth Sunday of service. Stir our hearts 
move us. Let your light shine upon us. That even those around us know that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. The Savior of the world. And Father, we invite you to have your way in us and in our homes and in our neighborhoods. We pray, O oh God, that you show us how to meet the needs around us in the name of Christ. We pray in Christ. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. I hope that you remember these names and your prayers uh, this week. Um, Susan, Susie Nagel, Ginger Hill, Luba Chance, Dolores Howard, and Delene Anstein. Um, her funeral will be this Thursday at 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Visitation will be at 10 o'clock uh, here in the sanctuary as well. Uh, this Wednesday will be, be chapter 3 discussion of Jesus of the East. Uh, we'll be sending out a link tomorrow. It's still not too late for you to join us in our discussion. Uh, it's been a wonderful discussion. And we're learning so much about God's love uh, for his world and how he's challenging us to be his hands and feet uh, to our community. Our Freedom Quilts Tour is in a couple of weeks. That email has been sent out. You have an opportunity to go online and fill up a slot, um, but I also encourage you to share that with your neighbors, share that with others, that they may come and experience this beautiful story of God's love for all his people. Next Sunday is Super Bowl of Caring. Uh, you can uh, support, we're supporting BIM through this uh, ministry. You can send a check to them um, just make sure you put Super Bowl of Caring on your check, or if you do it online, to make sure that, that we know it's Super Bowl of Caring that that check is going to. Uh, BIM is doing incredible work in our neighborhood, and we're so grateful that we get to partner with them, and in any way we can support them, we want to do that. And so we're grateful for Super Bowl of Caring. gives us that opportunity to do that. Uh, birthdays this week, Kevin uh, Madol. Uh, Mona McPherson, Ruthie Addison, Rachel Robinson, Rex Hawkins, Warren Kendall, and Hayden Watson. Um, please send them a card. Just wish them a happy birthday. Uh, we're so grateful for uh, Alex and able to celebrate his milestone and for you being part of today's worship. Now Sarah will come and lead us in our benediction. The blessing of the eternal God is upon you. Redeeming grace, enfolding love, enduring fellowship, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>